What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. This episode's clearly going to be a doozy, so let's go ahead and just tell the time. It is 1.38 p.m. Let's get down to business. man there's a lot to reminisce about this channel is three years old guys we've been on YouTube for about three years and uh, I've made a lot of episodes over 500 pieces of content and one of the funniest episodes I ever made is the rant I did about tag Hoyer I think the title was why I never talk about tag and yeah people to this day the saltiest of salty people will be in the comment section telling me I'm not allowed to have an opinion on tag because I've never personally owned one. Well, yeah, why would I ever purchase something that I deem to be garbage? But yeah, after three years of that episode being on YouTube and again, just regular hate in the comment section, uh, got me thinking, why are people so upset about my low opinion of TAG? And I think I've realized it, okay? Um, I personally, again, never owned a TAG Hoyer, uh, and I think the people that do own TAGs are upset that I did my due diligence, okay? Uh, I did my research, I experienced the watch uh, without having to kind of figure it out the hard way, and all these people, they spent their money on a tag and then they, you know, feel the need to justify that purchase by attacking anyone that has a less than stellar opinion on their overpriced hot garbage. It's really not that complicated, okay? People make millions of decisions every day based upon very basic reasoning functions and sources of perspective. Happen all the time. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what critical thinking is. In fact, I googled it. Critical thinking, the objective analysis and evaluation of an issue in order to form a judgment. So, I stand by my statement. You don't need to personally own something to have an opinion on it. You don't even need to experience something firsthand to be fairly knowledgeable about it. If that were the case, Doctors wouldn't really be able to practice medicine outside of any illness or injury they have themselves. Mechanics wouldn't be able to work on cars they don't personally own. And historians wouldn't be able to write books about any era they didn't live through. But back to Tag Hoyer. Okay, uh, the truth is, I do have some experience with Tag. Uh, I have family members that have owned Tag watches, unfortunately. I have friends that have unfortunately purchased Tag Heuer watches. And guess what? I've come to the conclusion I never want to own one. You see, all the Tag Heuer fanboys seem to just rush the comment section in the defense of Tag, but they never want to bring up Tag Heuer's very blatant shortcomings. So I'm going to do that here. First of all, pricing. Now in the grand scheme of things, Tag Heuer might be considered one of the more affordable Swiss luxury brands, but the truth is they they are incredibly overpriced for what you get. Over $1,000 for a quartz aqua racer. Over $1,800 for a Tag Heuer connected smartwatch. Uh, right now you can get an Apple Watch 5 for under 500 bucks. But right here is probably one of the most atrocious examples of Tag Heuer's ridiculous pricing. They have a quartz Carrera chronograph that goes for almost $3,000. Who wants to pay these prices? Simply for the Tag Heuer name? Really? Well, the Tag Heuer fanboys will simply come out and say that I don't understand the value Tag Heuer offers. And we mustn't forget, Tag Heuer uh, makes one of the most affordable Swiss tourbillons. <laughs> so your argument is invalid, time teller. The next issue that I think Tag Heuer really has is uh, they, they have a confusing identity or lack thereof. You see, I don't really understand what products Tag Heuer makes and it's because Tag Heuer doesn't understand what products they make. You see, on one end, Tag Heuer makes these kind of poorly functioning, way overpriced smartwatches and then on the other end, they keep making a mockery of their own history by reusing and recycling old Hoyer names like uh, Octavia, Carrera, and then of course the Monaco, which is probably the only Tag Hoyer currently worth purchasing, although it's a matter of time until that one gets ruined. But perhaps the worst thing about Tag Hoyer is that they are just straight up liars. That's right, they've lied to you, they've lied to me, they've probably even lied to themselves. Uh, one thing that the Tag Hoyer fanboy will never bring up in the comment section of one of my videos is the good old Cal 1887. That's right, ring a bell? That's right, the glorious Cal 1887 was 100% in-house by Tag Heuer, according to them at least. 
Well, not quite. In fact, it actually wasn't really even Swiss made. In fact, former CEO Jean-Christophe Babin had to come out with a very embarrassing statement explaining that he kind of regrets the marketing they were using at the time and uh, the very prolific Cal 1887, the 100% in-house by tag movement, was actually just a highly modified Seiko TC78 chronograph movement. You can't make this stuff up. Well, no, Tag, Ho Tag Heuer did make it up, actually. They did make up that it was in-house. It's a Seiko movement! Yikes! Yeah, if they just came out and said, hey, we're using a modified Seiko movement, I think people would be fine with that. That's a really good movement, and I'm sure they did a lot of good work to it, but saying it's 100% in-house by Tag Heuer is a straight-up lie. That's not an inaccuracy, that's a lie. So if there was ever a question whether or not Tag Heuer relies on their misleading advertising, yeah, this should clear it all right up. Tag Heuer is only marketing, they're only a name, and I know the Tag Heuer fanboy is going to be like, <laughs> Rolex relies on marketing too! Yeah, well, the main difference between a Rolex and a Tag Heuer is that you can actually sell a Rolex for more than you paid for it. Tag Heuer just goes straight into the dumpster. Maybe keep that Seiko movement, though, because you could probably use that in another really good watch. But alas, I'm sure this episode will be very unsatisfactory to the Tag Heuer fanboy, and they will be in the comment section unable to combat any of the points I made, so they will do what they always do and rely on poorly spelled personal attacks. I look forward to it. But guys, let me know, what is your experience with Tag Heuer, and do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, come on, how can they keep messing up like this, and how can people keep defending them? Either way, wherever you fall, please uh, leave in the comment section. I'd love to hear your point, and uh, yeah, we can kind of debate there. And if you're new here, if you learned something, and if you had a good time, then please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Go one step further and hit the bell icon so you get notified whenever we release all this awesome content here on the channel. We upload Monday, Wednesday, Friday with the live stream every Saturday, but there's two extra pieces of content per week for the channel members. That's right, we don't use Patreon, we use YouTube channel memberships. YouTube channel memberships, excuse me, a little bit of a tongue twister. $4.99 a month gets you six pieces of content a week with access to the members only Discord chat. It's a whole lot of fun and uh, yeah, we have a blast over there. Very di diverse group of people and um, it's just really fun to have everyone's different perspectives. And uh, yeah, we, we have a lot of good topics over there. So please, I'd love to see you there. Hit that join button next to the subscribe button and become a certified T3 bot. So please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the links in the description below. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Tag Hoyer is a really... Company. I don't know why I did that on camera.